What is going on, Pats Nation? You guys already know who it is. Patriots Global here back with another video. And in this one, we are going to be talking about a long awaited topic and Calvin Ridley to the New England Patriots, a potential trade. Does it make sense? What's the compensation that would potentially have to be given up on both sides? And then, of course, what I think the likelihood of this trade is going to be. Now, before we get into this video, please make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for all of your New England Patriots news, and comment below what you guys think about Calvin Ridley to the New England Patriots, if you think it makes sense, if you think it will happen, or if you even want it to happen. Also, if you guys want to get some exclusive content from me and the channel, content you cannot find here on YouTube, get access to these videos early on. And join a Discord chat with me, Patriots Football Breakdown, and other Patreon members. Make sure to hit that link in the description below. Great way to get benefits from the channel, and great way to support the channel also. It means a lot. Thanks, guys. Now, Calvin Ridley missed pretty much the entirety of the 2021 season, only appearing in five games after he surprisingly had to step away for mental health reasons. Then the end of the 2021 season came and we got into the postseason. We got into the offseason for the majority of the NFL teams. And we started to hear rumors that Calvin Ridley could actually be looking for a fresh start and potentially wanting out of Atlanta. Now, Calvin really hadn't played since week seven, and if he's truly stepping away to deal with mental health issues, and those mental health issues could pan back to being with the Atlanta Falcons, then obviously Calvin Ridley is not going to return to Atlanta. He's not going to play for them again. Therefore, it makes sense for both sides. One, Calvin Ridley because he wants to be out, and two, it makes sense for Atlanta because you might as well get something for a player, compensation, another player, rather than stashing a player on your roster that is a great player, yes, but isn't going to play for you. Now, obviously, Calvin Ridley would come in and give the New England Patriots essentially exactly what they need offensively. New England has the offensive coordinator, they have the game plan, they have the quarterback, they have the offensive line, they have the running back quarterback it up, they have pieces already that back up a true wide receiver one. Unfortunately, New England does not have a true wide receiver one, which has thrusted guys like Jacoby Myers, Kendrick Bourne, Nelson Aguilar into roles that realistically they should not be in. They are all playing in roles one to two roles essentially where they should be. Now, this is definitely going to have to be a story that we continue to hear about and continues to develop because Calvin Ridley, again, did step away from mental health reasons. Are those mental health reasons getting better? Is he going to be able to play for the 2022 season? Is he going to be able to play for the start of that season? I don't see any team trading for Calvin Ridley if he is not sure 100% that he can come back for next season. But the fact that there is word coming from his camp that he is likely looking for a trade in this offseason very much signals the fact that he is likely to be back in the NFL next season in 2022 as long as he's not with Atlanta. Now, it's also really interesting here. The question mark is going to come up on would the Patriots even be interested in Calvin Ridley? And I 120% believe that New England at the very least is going to be interested in trading for Calvin Ridley. Again, what is this team missing? A true number one wide receiver. You have excellent number two, number three, number four, number fives. You have two great tight ends. But until you have that true number one wide receiver, you're asking players to play in positions that essentially they're just not supposed to be in. This also makes a ton of sense because back in the 2018 draft, First round, New England decides to go with left tackle Isaiah Wynn, but New England was going back and forth with themselves down to the wire on if they were going to select either Isaiah Wynn or Calvin Ridley. Ultimately, the Patriots go with Isaiah Wynn at left tackle. A couple selections later, the Atlanta Falcons pick up Calvin Ridley and the rest is history. Now, for his first two seasons, Calvin Ridley was mainly used as a wide receiver, too, because he was still behind Julio Jones, who obviously served as the wide receiver one, as at that time, he was one of the best wide receivers, if not the best wide receiver in the entire National Football League. 
despite still being thrusted into that wide receiver two role, he was still able to put up 821 yards in his rookie season, rookie season averaging 12.8 yards per reception and 10 touchdowns. In his second season in 2019, he was able to put up 866 yards, averaging 13.7 yards a carry and seven touchdowns. And then in 2020, when Julio Jones was dealing with really those bulks of his injury, really barely played in that 2020 season, that thrusted Calvin Ridley into that starting role, into that wide receiver one role, which he appeared in 15 games, so didn't even play a full season, and was able to rack up 143 targets, 90 receptions, 1,374 yards, averaging 15.3 yards of reception, and 9 touchdowns. Now, for the limited action that we actually saw Calvin Ridley play in 2021, he was targeted 52 times with 31 receptions for a total of 281 yards, averaging 9.1 yards per carry and two touchdowns. Now, Ridley makes a lot of sense for the Patriots because he fits this system, this offensive system, extremely, extremely well. Let's just say he is exactly the mold that New England should be looking at when drafting a wide receiver and is the exact opposite of what Nikhil Harry is. He brings nothing but versatility to an offense, and in this case, we would say the Patriots offense. He mostly plays on the outside, sitting at six foot one, so brings a little bit of height here for the Patriots, but also plays in the slot. When he does play in the slot, he is a matchup nightmare. New England could really use guys on both the outside and in the slot, but they really need a guy who can be explosive in the slot, which is where I think Calvin Ridley could really excel with New England and take this offense to the next level. Now, Calvin Ridley also isn't known for being one of the fastest receivers in the NFL. He's not slow, but he isn't going to be your Brandon Cooks. He isn't going to be your Nelson Aguilar. He isn't going to be the speedster on the team. He ran a 444 in his 40-yard dash, so he can still get down the field he can still be a vertical and deep threat but that's not his game his game is getting open he has really great release his route tree is spectacular and he's a guy that you can consistently rely on he's a guy that due to his route is able to just naturally get open he does not rely on that speed to get open because of those intangibles, he would work really, really well in the Patriots' short to intermediate route system because he's also good once he gets the ball in his hands. Now, with that being said, I think Josh McDaniels could come up with a lot of, a lot of great plays for someone like Calvin Ridley because Calvin Ridley now, you thrust him into that wide receiver one role, you start bumping guys down like Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne, Jacoby Myers, and now instead of them going up against you know CB1, CB2s, they're respectfully going up against guys that they genuinely should and technique-wise can beat. You bring Calvin Ridley in and it helps everybody else get open. So now we talk about Calvin Ridley's contract. So for whoever trades for Calvin Ridley, they're only getting him on a one-year deal. He's only signed through 2022 on that rookie contract. So unless the Patriots sign him to an extension, you're really getting him on a one-year rental. Now, with that being said, that one-year rental is going to be about $11.1 million. That is going to be his cap number for the 2022 season. For the Atlanta Falcons, if they do trade him, they would save that majority. They would save that $11.1 million, and the team that signs him would be taking on that contract. But stay with me. If... Any team that Calvin Ridley decides to go to signs him to an extension, so signs him past the 2022 season, they will be saving $8.1 million. So that cap number seems really large with that $11.1 million, but you can bring that down significantly if you sign Calvin Ridley to an extension, which essentially would you would hope that would be what Bill Belichick does, pairing Mac Jones, the young rookie quarterback, up with the young 27-year-old true number one wide receiver that Calvin Ridley is. So now comes up with the compensation. What would teams have to give up in order to acquire Calvin Ridley? Now, if you're talking about Calvin Ridley in the 2020 season, you're easily asking for more than a first round pick. But now that he's in his rookie year, he didn't really play much in 2021. He clearly wants out of Atlanta and was dealing with mental health issues, that's going to bring his stock down a good bit. 
Now, I'm hearing it could be a first round pick, but honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if it goes even less than that. You know, maybe instead of a first round pick, the Atlanta Falcons are looking for a second and a fifth. But I think this all just really depends on what the market for Calvin Ridley is going to look like. If it is that marginal, then yes, teams are going to get into bidding wars and they very well could still get a first round pick. Unfortunately for New England, they are not in the same case as they were a year ago from now where they have a ton of draft capital and they have a ton of cap space. In fact, it is the opposite. They have little to zero cap space before making any adjustments to the roster and they don't have all that much draft capital. Now, yes, they have a first round pick, a second round pick, a third round pick, a fourth round pick, and a sixth round pick. But New England only has one of each, and they are missing a 5th and 7th round pick. Now, you have teams like the Eagles, the Dolphins, uh, the Jets, teams who have multiple 1st round picks alone, that could really get into the bidding war. If those teams are against the New England Patriots in the bidding war for Calvin Ridley, then New England is likely out of the sweepstakes unless Calvin Ridley specifically says, hey, I want to go to the New England Patriots. Now, you could say, well, maybe the Patriots can offer some players. There's several players they could potentially be trading. Maybe they can offer that first round pick and a player, a second round pick and a player. But what you have to realize is that a team like the Atlanta Falcons, who essentially is in a lot of ways looking to get younger, looking to maybe even potentially rebuild, they're not looking for older to even middle-aged players. These, This team, really, the Atlanta Falcons, is looking to... Head into the draft, get a rookie on a short four-year deal, obviously worth minimal, and be able to have the option on who they can pick. Now, you can say that their defense is terrible. They could potentially be looking at wanting to chase Winovich, maybe a Josh Uche, maybe you can throw Nikhil Harry in there, but you have to ask yourselves how much weight are those guys truly going to hold versus genuine draft capital, like an extra fourth, third, second, or even first round pick. So I 100% believe that Calvin Ridley is going to be traded this offseason. The potential for the New England Patriots, though, is going to depend on how strong Calvin Ridley's market is. So we're just going to have to continue to wait. We're going to see how this story develops. I think that's going to be very telling on the market and the potential compensation you have to give up for Calvin Ridley. So make sure you guys do subscribe to the channel because I will be covering you guys and keeping you updated with this entire storyline. Before we end this video off, I want to give a big shout out to the sponsors of the video and the sponsors of the channel, betonline.ag. Guys. Bet Online is here for the postseason. They're here for the final round of the playoffs, and they are here for the Super Bowl. There is no better time to bet, and there is no better place to bet than Bet Online, as they are your number one sport for all pro and college football action. They have a new updated site and interface with even more odds, props, and contests. And Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. All you guys have to do is head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 100% off welcome bonus. That is double your initial deposit just for. For signing up. Do not forget to use that promo code NFL100. Again, that is NFL100. Guys, all the way from football to basketball to boxing, even to your favorite Vegas casino games, do not wait to take advantage of all of the amazing offers still available for the 2021 season. Bet online, your online sports books, and bet online the fastest and easiest ways to bet on all of your favorite sports. Now, what are your guys' thoughts on Calvin Ridley and the odds of him being traded to the New England Patriots? Let me know in the comment section below. Remember to leave a big like on this video and subscribe to the channel for all of your New England Patriots news. Like always, though, I appreciate you guys for watching this one. Like always, go Pats.